Hello there. A few weeks ago, during the Eurobike trade show, or at least I think it was Eurobike, we've been treated to the 13-speed drivetrain, which I think is a very interesting concept. Of course, I'm talking about a rotor 13-speed drivetrain, and I'm not going to be talking about that today. Also, on the same trade show, we've been treated to another 13-speed drivetrain, which is made by the company called Ceramic Speed. And I find the drivetrain not interesting, because it is interesting in and of itself, but because Ceramic Speed is a company that creates the most useless cycling product ever conceived. And I'm talking about their uh, replacement derailleur cages with oversized pulleys. And today I'm going to explain to you why they are completely useless. Let's start with a little background information. Ceramic Speed, among other things, offers a variety of replacement cages for a variety of road derailleurs, which employ the single concept, which is using an oversized pulleys in the derailleur cage, reduces friction. According to their materials, it's between 30 to 60%. If you listen to the interviews with Ceramic Speed people, they claim that it gives savings of about 1 to 2 or 3 watts, depending on who you ask. Uh, those savings come at a hefty price of approximately 500 euros, and they also have the ultimate model, which is made of uh, the same uh, carbon side plates and titanium printed pulleys for about 1,500 euros. The most important term you need to know in this thought experiment is efficiency. In physical terms, we define efficiency as a difference between uh, the energy put into a system and the energy that was taken out of the system in the form of a useful work. If you dig around the internet, uh, you will most likely stumble upon the study of International Human Power Association, which uh, tries to assess the efficiency of bicycle drivetrains you will infer from that study that the uh, efficiency of a bicycle drivetrain is approximately 95%. According to the study, it varies from 91-92% up to 99%, depending on the drivetrain in question. That's for the sake of argument, assume that it's 95%. It means that uh, if you are a perfect source of power with 250 watts put into the pedals, your rear hub is going to see, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 237.5 watts, which means that 12.5 watts were eaten by the drivetrain you are using. It also means that the maximum amount of energy you can save by optimizing your drivetrain in this scenario is 12.5 watts. So that's the budget ceramic speed people have to take their savings. From. So now we have a question of magnitude. Essentially, how much energy is lost in the pulleys of the derailleur? I'm going to presuppose that it is 95% of the energy lost in the drivetrain is lost somewhere else, which leaves 5% in the pulleys of the derailleur. And of course you should ask why would I make such an assumption, because obviously I'm setting it up to prove my point. Here's why. If you observe wheel patterns on your drivetrain, you will quickly note that the parts that were the fastest are made out of steel. I'm of course, I'm talking about cogs of the cassette and chain. If you have a modern bicycle, your chain rings are most likely made out of 7075 uh, T6 aluminum, and pulleys in the derailleur are made out of uh, polyoxymethylene, or POM, or commonly known as plastic. All others being equal, the rate of wear between different parts is obviously going to be down to the hardness of the material they are made of. Your cogs in the cassette are made out of chromoly steel, which uh, is uh, hardened to approximately 40 HRC, or, this is, or at least this is the data I was able to find. Uh, your chain rings, made out of aluminum, 70, uh, 70 75 T6, are, uh, have hardness of approximately 100, 180 HRB. And polyoxymethylene, also known as plastic pulleys, have hardness of approximately 80 HRM. And those numbers told you nothing in particular. Hardness of different materials is measured in different ways, because materials are vastly different. Steels are rated in Rockwell C scale, among other things. Uh, a 
aluminum is rated in Rockwell B scale and plastics are rated in Rockwell M scale. They are different because if you try to test uh, steels in test which is used for plastics, you'd get no sensible results because steels are so hard. Essentially, uh, that boils down to how hardness is measured and it's usually or most likely measured in a, a way that you are dropping something on a, a piece of your material, a sample of your material, and looking how much of a mark it left. The starting conditions of your test determine what kind of test you're making. And if you tried, for example, to test plastics with an HSC test, you would get uh, no sensible result whatsoever. You would either damage the sample or always get the same result or something like that. However, what you're taking out of it is that steels are much harder than plastics. And I shouldn't really explain that because that's obvious, right? However, if steels are much harder than plastics and the rate of wear of steel parts is faster than that of plastics, it means that whatever caused that wear had to be much more, let's just say, persistent on the steel parts than on the plastic ones. So if a rate of wear of your cog is three times faster than the rate of the plastic pulleys, it means that you had to do much more work per tooth or per wear, let's just say, unit on a steel part than on the plastic. And that means that majority of uh, energy losses, because obviously how much work you've done to wear something is proportional to the amount of energy lost in the drivetrain, or that part, how much work you've done uh, had to be much higher on the non-pulley parts. So, for the sake of argument, I am assuming that 95% of losses in the drivetrain were lost somewhere else. That number might be different, might be 96%, 92%, however, it is certain that it is an order of magnitude higher than that on the plastic parts. And in the limits of our experiment, it means that ceramic speed people now had a budget of 12.5 watts, is now reduced to 0.6 of a watt. I could possibly leave it at here because uh, 0.6 of a watt isn't much and worrying about it is, shouldn't be your top priority. However, it's even worse than that. If you look at the claims of ceramic speed people, they will tell you that because pulleys are bigger, uh, you get less friction. And they are absolutely correct in this. Essentially, uh, the reduced uh, friction comes from the uh, reduced friction in the uh, bearings of the pulleys. If pulley is bigger, it rotates slower, and since it rotates slower, it loses less energy. How much less? Well, we can uh, estimate it to be proportional to the size of the pulley. So, if uh, your pulleys you just paid for 500 uh, euros for have 17 teeth and you change from 11 teeth, you are going to uh, save approximately 33% of the energy loss in the pulleys. How much is that? Well, it's the number you see on the screen. 0.22 of a watt. That's the magnitude of savings you are talking about here. So, if you are producing 250 watts at the crank, you are saving approximately 0.1 of a percent. To put it into perspective, if you were racing the guy who set the record on Alpe de Ues, you'd beat him by two seconds. Moreover, if you are the kind of guy who sets the records on Alpe de Ues, you'd benefit even less because losses on the return side of the chain aren't really, mm, I just say, dependent on the tension on the drivetrain. So if your power goes up to 500 watts, then you are saving half of a one-tenth of a percent, or even less. Essentially, a strong gust of wind is going to foil your attempts, or, among all the things that make a bicycle lose power or create drag, this is so minuscule that it's possibly, mm, let's just say this, 
impossible to measure. We're talking about something, something that is essentially statistical noise. So one would have to ask, what's the point of this product? I mean, obviously it isn't technical, you are not saving much or you're not saving something that is even measurable in the, with the current equipment, so why buy this? And the only thing I can think of is social standing? I don't know. Maybe there are people who look at your derailleur and think, yeah, that guy spent 1,500 euros for that. He must be cool, I think. Well, that's my take on this, and all the uh, calculations are in the description, as well as the link to the International Human Power Association study. So if you're interested in that, take a look below. And with that in mind, thank you for your attention, and see you next time. One more thing because I am fairly sure that some people are going to mm, notice this. I am obviously setting a case and I want to prove my point. Obviously, if you set the percentages and numbers in my example, you're going to arrive at a different value. The point isn't that you are saving 0.2 of a watt, because if you set your percentages differently, you're going to save 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a watt. I'm trying to note here that the magnitude of how much you're saving with those cages is essentially irrelevant because uh, there isn't really much energy lost in the pulleys of the derailleur and your, um, your savings are essentially proportional to the size of those cogs. So 33% of not that much is still not that much. And uh, if you could get one of those cages for 20 bucks or it was factory on your derailleur then that's in irrelevant because you're going to get it uh, anyway however i am questioning the point of 0.2 of a watt 0.3 of a watt 0.4 of a watt for 500 euros there's no there's no justification for this other than you have money to burn or you want to show some people though that you have money to burn or i don't know and I think I'm going to finish here.